hello lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In today's episode of Math Mondays, we are going to learn about conductors! Woo! Wait, no, not train conductors, although they look like they have a super fun job. We are going to learn about electrical conductors, yes! So in this video, we will look at why certain materials conduct electricity well, and why other types of materials don't conduct electricity well, or why they resist the flow of electricity. And then we will look at the fundamental properties of conductors um, and learn how we can, you know, better understand them and better use them to build things like electronics. Yay! Okay, let's get started. So first of all, why do conductors do their thing? Why do they allow the flow of electricity? What makes them different from other types of materials? So this is super fun because this is actually a question that gets down to the heart of molecules or atoms. So atoms have a nucleus in the center, um, which is made up of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutrally charged. So you have your nucleus, which I'm gonna draw in white, and it is very, very, very tiny and very, 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 very massive. So that's where most of the mass of the atoms comes from. And then you have an electron cloud, um, which is really hard to draw. So I'm just gonna represent it with circles. Um, so keep in mind that quantum mechanics tells us that um, electrons um, are both particles and waves. I'm going to use the particle representation because again, very a lot easier for me to draw. Um, so in an insulator, what you have is you have um, a more what I would call rigid structure. So um, the reason why is because these atoms share electrons with each other. And this is also what makes them more, well, what makes them pretty stable. Um, so they like to share their electrons, but what that also means, oops, wait, let me get a different color for the electrons. Ooh, they're gonna be blue. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, so what this means is that um, these electrons aren't really free to move about because they have to kind of stay um, within this sharing space. Um, but in, so this is an insulator, and electrons are negatively charged. In a conductor, what you have is the nuclei are kind of, well, this is going to be a little bit harder to draw, um, so bear with me, and this is kind of just a little representation. Um, but all of these, uh, all of these atoms are basically like kind of set with their electrons, and so they have um, free electrons that are able to kind of just move about um, in between the nuclei. They're not shared like they are in an insulator. And again, this is a very rough approximation, um, but I, I would definitely recommend checking out pictures of what these different atomic configurations look like, because then you're like, oh, okay, so this um, conductors have free charges, they can roam about, insulators, the electrons are pretty much confined uh, to a limited space. That said, if you get enough electrical energy, um, you can actually, you know, remove these electrons and then you get charged flowing through insulators. It's just a matter of how much energy does it take. For conductors, you don't need a lot of electrical energy to get these charges to move. Okay, so that is the difference between conductors and insulators. Yay! Conductors tend to be metals, and that has to do with the number of electrons that they have, where they have kind of a little extra electron on the top that's like, I don't need to be connected to anybody, I'm just gonna float around. And this results in a number of really interesting and useful properties of conductors, which we will cover. So the first one, is that the electric field, or the E field for short, is zero inside a conductor. Wait, what? That's pretty wild. Why does this happen? Okay, 
let's let's look at um, an example. So let's say we have a rectangular shaped conductor and it has these free charges, like free electrons just kind of floating about. And we put this conductor in an external electric field. We'll call it E naught and it has a direction like this. So the free electrons, because of the force of this external electric field, they are gonna flow to the left side. So these are all of our tiny little free electrons. And because electrons are negative and they all flow to the left side, that leaves a surplus of positive charge on the right side because Again, the nucleus of the atom is positively charged due to the positively charged protons. And so what happens is uh, these free charges are gonna keep flowing until they cancel out this external electric field. And that's gonna set up an internal electric field that is equal and opposite to this external one. Um, and the reason why they keep flowing until it cancels is because, well, in the presence of an external electric field, the charges are going to necessarily uh, be pushed by a force until it cancels out. The universe likes to be stable and reach equilibrium, and so that is what happens. And so now you end up with a net electric field of zero inside the conductor. So cool! Okay. All right, so that is property number one. And what ends up happening as a result of this is that the net charge density is zero inside the conductor. Okay, let's actually prove this because that is a bold statement to make. So uh, from Gauss's law, we know that the um, divergence of E is equal to the charge density over epsilon naught. Hey, but wait a second, this is zero, and so this must be zero. Ah! So this doesn't mean that there aren't any charges, but it does mean that the net charge density is zero. Okay. Number three. Um, any net charge, well, I guess I don't have to say any, net charge, resides on the surface or hangs out on the surface. Net charge on the surface. This kind of blows my mind um, and we'll get to this at the end once we've covered the other ones. Number four, I'm gonna turn my notes. Um, dun, 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 dun. A conductor is an equipotential meaning that if we look at any two points on the surface of the conductor or inside the conductor, the electric potential will be the same at those two points. Um, so let's say we have a conductor that's shaped like a circle this time, we'll do all the shapes, and I pick a point on the surface, um, and we'll call this point A and this point B. Um, so the electric potential is defined to be the integral or the path integral from a to b a dot dl hey but wait a second this is helping us get, do all sorts of things the electric field is zero and so you end up with v of a equals v of b or the electric potential at point a equals the electric potential at point b and again this works for any two points inside of the surface. And last but not least, um, the electric field is perpendicular to the surface. Wait, hold on, is perpendicular, the, is perpendicular to the surface on the outside. We'll say just outside. This is also super funky. Let's look at a fun shape. Woo, okay. So um, the electric field outside, and these kind of keep going. Um, so this is E outside. Remember, E is zero inside. 
but it will be perpendicular. Um, hopefully you get the point. My hand is starting to hurt from drawing all those lines. Um, so the reason why this happens is because the charges will float to, um, to the surface to cancel any um, other component of the electric field uh, that's tangential to the surface. So let's say, um, to make this easier to see, I'm gonna draw a red line. Let's say that my electric field had a component in this direction, but the, the free charges are like, excuse me, no, um, I'm, gonna f I'm gonna float along here and cancel you out. And so you end up with an equal and opposite electric field line. And so then the net effect is zero. So it cancels all of the tangential components of this external electric field, but the charges are stuck to the conductor. They can't just fly off entirely. They have to float around the material. Um, they are bound somewhat to the atoms of the, um, of the conductor, whether it's copper or gold or um, aluminum or whatever. Um, the electric charges are confined to the material. And so they can't cancel these um, perpendicular components. Okay, cool. So um, the last thing that I wanted to look at is why is this net charge on the surface? That is pretty funky. So basically, the reason why this happens has to do with energy. The universe likes to minimize energy. Um, honestly, so do we. Uh, we like to be lazy. And so it turns out that the, um, the potential energy is smaller for a, an even distribution of charge on the surface of a shape, of a conductor. Um, it's smaller than an even distribution of charge inside the conductor. Um, I'm not going to go through the equations, but basically um, the I'll say potential energy on the surface is 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught um, q squared over r. And the potential energy um, inside, if all of the, so this is if all the charges on the outside, and um, this is if charges spread out evenly throughout the whole surface. So some of it's gonna be on the outside, but some of, most of it's gonna be on the inside. Um, it turns out that the potential energy of this configuration is three over 20 pi epsilon naught Q squared over R. And so the surface potential energy is less than the potential energy inside. And so the electrons, they don't even need to think about it. They just do it because they want to be lazy and minimize their energy. Okay, so those are the main properties of conductors. Super cool. Um, this, uh, the electric field equaling zero inside a conductor, is also the reason why Faraday cages are a thing. The, oh, the lab that I worked in was a Faraday cage. The building was a Faraday cage because it was built with steel beams that happened to be at the right distance to block radio waves. So I did not get a cell phone signal inside of that building. Um, your microwave is also a Faraday cage and it uses the same basic property where if you have a uh, metal box, basically, um, it will, uh, the electric field will be zero inside of that box. And so if you put your cell phone inside the microwave, don't turn the microwave on unless you are trying to fry your cell phone or smartphone or whatever we're calling them these days. Um, but basically you won't get a cell phone signal inside the microwave. And the other good property is that the microwave keeps the microwaves, the um, electromagnetic uh, radiative microwaves inside the microwave. So also a good thing. So yay, conductors useful for moving electricity from one place to another without losing a lot of energy and also for allowing us to control electromagnetic radiation, whether it's radio waves or microwaves, or shielding us, um, mostly astronauts, from higher electromagnetic radiation outside the Earth's surface. Super cool. All right, so um, let me know if you have any questions about conductors, and uh, I will see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.